He is Jason. I am Jerem. And our next guest is Brady Papinga, former Cougar, NFL player, and NFL analyst. He joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Brady, great to have you back on BYUSN. How you doing? Always good to join you. Always good, guys. And I'm doing great. Thanks. Awesome. It's in an exciting time for Cougar fans watching guys in the pros. There have been eras where BYU had a lot of NFL guys, but it feels like right now BYU has guys on good teams and they are contributing in a major way. How do you see it in terms of BYU's influence in the NFL right now and with three guys on uh, championship uh, Sunday coming up? Yeah, I mean, it's quality over quantity, no question about that. And then also, when you throw in Taysom Hill into it, it's kind of revolutionary. So it's fun to watch. It's not surprising. You know, I remember I was uh, I was at some Mexican restaurant eating dinner with my dad, and Taysom Hill came up to me, and we were chatting it up. And it was after he graduated already, played his last game, and we were just talking about what was next. And he's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to try to play in the NFL. Well, I go, you're not going to try to play in the NFL. You're going to play in the NFL, bro. You're going to do it. And then, lo and behold, there he is doing it. So, I mean, it's – it's kind of like you can see the guys that have it. You can see the guys that will be able to thrive in the NFL. And like I said, BYU has a slew of guys that throughout the NFL, BYU guys like them, Taysom's, Dana Sorensen, Van Noy's, Fred Warner's, you know, Ziggy Ansnas, you can just keep going down the list. They're, they're searching deep and far and wide for those kind of guys, and they feel like, you know, every so often you can find those guys at BYU and that they're going to be stalwarts on your team. Since you brought up Taysom Hill, what are your thoughts on his situation? Do you think he goes back to New Orleans? Do you think he will get an opportunity to be a starting quarterback in the National Football League? If the league is smart, you know, and that's not always a guarantee. Some teams do really stupid things, and they do it quite frequently. I don't believe it helped him that the Baltimore Ravens were eliminated so quickly from the playoffs, especially by a team that – was basically going back in time with the Titans where they just are handing the ball off to a power running back playing power football and exploiting, you know, basically the overcorrection of the NFL. I'd say even football at large of defenses getting more and more accustomed to facing spread offenses, playing in space, and they're, they're ultimately be, they, they were becoming softer. And uh, you just don't see many linebackers, you don't see many defensive linemen anymore that are just real tough physical guys. And it's not because they're not tough and physical. It's just because they haven't played that style, and so it's very foreign to them. And so when you see all of a sudden that get exploited, it's usually the path of least resistance for a lot of these teams because it's very conservative. And so what happens is, is these teams say, okay, we can go find ourselves a Ryan Tannehill, which is a game manager. We don't have to be too risky, which, you know, if you, if you started Taysom and all that kind of stuff, it becomes a higher risk. And you know what? I can keep my job for another two to three years at the very least, even if the wheels fell off. Whereas if we got Taysom in as a starter and lo and behold, he gets hurt or, you know, we struggle and, you know, I, and we went out on the limb, uh, you know, it's going to be like the Cleveland Browns. They're going to immediately fire you and you're going to be out. So that's the difference, you know, really where he was at maybe a couple of weeks ago to where he's at now and it's market demand. And like I said, what was also going to dictate his market, I believe, to the highest degree was how the Ravens turned out because the league is such a copycat league. So I was very bullish on it because I thought the Ravens were going to run through the playoffs and probably win the Super Bowl. Now I'm kind of reserved on it a little bit. I don't know if teams are going to want to put themselves out on a limb because of, again, being conservative. And like I said, teams, just because it's the NFL doesn't mean general managers, head coaches know what they're doing. Talking with Brady Papinga here on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, Taysom Hill, one of uh, many Cougars who have had an impact on their teams. We saw the impact Daniel Sorensen had uh, on two straight possessions, forcing uh, turnovers, uh, one on downs and one on a kickoff return. And then there's Fred Warner with the Niners, and there's other guys. Who, who of the BYU Cougars in the NFL, in your opinion, has had the biggest impact on their team this year? Man, it's probably been Taysom. And Taysom, and that's what makes him special. And it's one of those unquantifiables. And I don't know if you guys noticed in the playoff game, whenever he made a, a play, it wasn't just the energy that was injected into the guys playing. It was everybody, the sidelines, the coaches, the fans. And he's had that effect even back to what I, I, I assume when he's in high school. But, you know, we saw it at BYU. He was such uh, an impactful guy in the sense that he made everybody around him better. 
and he infused confidence in everybody around him. And those are kind of things that just are very rare. I mean, you, you, you can look at so many quarterbacks and impactful players throughout the history of football, and you can see that some of the most productive guys, and, and a, you know, a guy would, uh, that you throw in with like a Dan Marino kind of guy, he couldn't do that to his teammates. He couldn't elevate his teammates above and beyond their own kind of, you know, capabilities. You know, and you go down the list of guys that have all these really good numbers and are very productive, but they just don't have that leadership influence. Taysom does. It's special, and uh, for that reason, you know, like I said, if a team's smart and they're not kind of getting caught up into this copycat cycle, which the NFL tends to do because of, you know, wanting to keep their job and just not being ultimately very smart, you know, he should be a starting quarterback because you want everybody around you to feel a little extra juice when you got a guy on the field, and that's what Taysom does. He certainly does that. Uh, a question there, because he's thrown 13 passes in his career. Does he need a little more run at quarterback to be given that opportunity, or do you think that opportunity should come now despite kind of low volume in terms of passing the ball? Uh, he's been he's passed the ball well enough, I mean, throughout the preseason and practices. I mean, he's he's like most guys. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, I don't even know if, you know, if he threw the ball very much in the last couple of years. <laughs> uh, you know, really, because he was, you know, he was out. Uh, it happens a lot. So I don't believe that has anything to do with it. I think if you're like – the guy who has had the most intimate, uh, you could say, kind of witness of how he's been able to operate as a quarterback, Sean Payton. And that's why, I mean, if I had to put my money on anything, I would say that the, 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 the Saints are going to do anything they can to keep Taysom. And that's why if you're like, I would say, the Patriots or somebody out there and you knew that the, the Saints were really, really, you know, wanting him, you would kind of force the Saints to have to pay him money which if you can force the Saints to overpay for pace, Taysom, which I, I think you probably could, uh, in, in theory, you know, this is all just theoretical, uh, then that kind of would handicap their ability to build a team, you know, and so you're kind of, you're kind of throwing them, because you can, and the reason why you can is he has that restricted free agent thing right. to where everything, you know, any offer he gets, they would have to match. And so you're just assuming that the Saints really want him, which I do believe the Saints really, 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 really want to keep Taysom. I mean, I've never seen Sean Payton gush about a player publicly as I've seen him do about Taysom, which I don't think he can help it. Ideally, coaches don't want to gush about players because they don't want to do the very thing that the Saints have done and which has set themselves up to where now you've created a huge market for them and then teams kind of start messing with your cap space, especially with a restricted free agent, to where they offer them, uh, you know, a contract that they can't, re- they can't, they have to, you know what I'm saying? They have to match, but they really can't afford to match, and that's where I think the Saints are at right now. Brady, you've been in this situation before. You're down to the final four teams. It's conference championship Sunday. What is what is this? moment like for a player when you know you are one win away from going to the Super Bowl? It's kind of surreal, you know, because the season's a very long season relative to just what you're accustomed to football being because it's, you know, you got preseason, there's four games there, the regular season, which is 17 weeks, 21 weeks. All you do is obsess and kind of talk about the Super Bowl. When you're growing up, you – you, you know, you follow the Super Bowl as this kind of mystical, for me anyway, it was kind of this mystical game that was bigger than life because of the performances and what it meant for cultural, you know, uh, just just how the culture was established in the United States of America. And so when you're on the brink of it, you're kind of like, what? This is, this is unbelievable. We're, we're really close. You know, and that's what these championship games, though, I'm telling you, they are, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're boomer bust, man. If, and they're not – it's like kind of funky, too, because they're boom for a second if you win, get to the Super Bowl, and then if you lose, it's kind of you want to just forget about it because it creates that much more deeper of a, a hurt if you lose the Super Bowl and you came all that way. And then if you get to the championship game, you lose like we did against the Giants in 07, or well, at least it was 08, the 07 season. You uh, – man, it, it's, it just tears your heart out because you come so close and – I mean, you're on the brink, and it's you know, and it's like you feel like, man, we could, we could have been there so easy because we're you feel as good as any team that plays right now. So it's it's a real mixed emotions depending on the outcome because right because right now every team feels like they could win the whole thing. They're they're flying high because 
They're in the Final Four. They're flying high because they won a playoff game. And it's in the case of the Titans, they've won two playoff games. And you're just, you know, you're just, I mean, you are pumped. And then all that literally could disappear and convert itself to extreme disappointment if you lose the championship game. And let's talk about that and wrap with this. Who do you think wins uh, between the Chiefs, Titans, and then the Packers, Niners? Well, Packers, Niners, I can never, I will never bet against Aaron Rodgers. And I'm going to tell you this, it will take him to be extremely hot because there's no way they're going to be able to just kind of line up and pound the football and play this awesome defense against a very strong running game. Aaron's going to have to be the best player in the world. And I, and I, I never bet against that. I have a feeling he's going to do it. I'm going to go with the Packers, and then I will go with the Chiefs on the other side of the bracket. I'm, I'm really wanting to see Andy Reid break through because he's, he's dealing with the most pressure. You know, he's a guy that literally if he retired tomorrow in the football world, people would look at him like, yeah, he's one of the best coaches ever. But then they would look at the lack of a Super Bowl, and they'd say, eh, Never mind, you know, and so yeah. he's he's in that kind of stage. It's like the Utah Jazz with Jerry Sloan, Carmelo, and John Sox for all those years where strict of, you know what, until you win that Super Bowl, you're not validated, you know. So I, I'd like to see Andy Reid eventually get in there and get over the top. Okay, awesome stuff. We look forward to the weekend. We're interested to watch Taysom Hill in the offseason. Lots of Cougars in the NFL. Brady, we always appreciate the time, man. Always a pleasure, guys. Enjoy your weekend, and thanks for having me on. Okay, thanks. Brady Papinga on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. He's had a really successful career yes. post-NFL as a broadcaster and otherwise. Always opinionated. Always appreciate him uh, coming on the show. Look, to my knowledge, at least that I know publicly, he's done two interviews in the last couple of days. The Herd with Colin Cowherd and BYU Sports Nation. Which are on the same plane <laughs> of viewership, I believe. So that's awesome. Yes, that's pretty cool. Yeah, great and he always, he always brings it. Always got yes. an opinion. Yeah. Yes. A little biased on that Packer pick as a former Packer. but Clearly that's totally he knows fine. what he's talking about with the Chiefs pick. Totally. <laughs> nice. Yeah.